Previously, in the Aeneid, we learned a little about Aeolus, the king of the winds, and how and why he got his power. The winds are a massively destructive force, and if unleashed onto the world, would cause destruction and ruin. So Jupiter, and only Jupiter, has authority over Aeolus. Juno, though, is going to try to enlist his help in stirring up a storm to hinder or even kill the Trojans. And that's where we begin. The Quem is Aeolus, and we've already seen suplex before in line 49, as a suppliant. The verb utor, which is here in the perfect tense usost, takes its object in the ablative case. His wokebos is technically an instrumental ablative. It's literally made use with these words, but we don't say that. Used or employed these words. Juno begins with the vocative aeole, with the divum pater, and here we see another um instead of the genitive plural orum, is Jupiter. Oh, hey, so is hominum rex. Hominum is third declension, so this um here is standard. Dedit here, when followed by an infinitive or two, has the meaning gave the power. Fluctus, is the object of both mulcere and todere, is a fourth declension accusative plural. Scan this line and you'll find out that this ending is a long U.S., and so it's plural. Finally, wento is an ablative of means. Iolus uses his winds to affect the waves, which are technically part of Neptune's sphere. In amica, hateful takes a dative to complete its meaning. Hateful to me. Juno also tells us where the Trojans are, sailing north from Sicily, which makes them in the Terhanian Sea here on the western side of Italy. Traditionally, nawagat wouldn't take a direct object, so this must be something like an accusative of extent of space, like through the Terhanian Sea. The present participle portans modifies the gains. We've got a bit of figurative language here. The Trojans are bringing to Italy Ilium, another name for Troy, which really represents Trojan culture and customs. And the Penates, which are old Latin household gods, so Virgil places their origin back in Troy, which is why he describes them as Victos. Aeneas carried them out of Troy with him and his family during the sack. These are quick references to two parts of the piety triangle, too. The Penates for religion and Ilium for the Trojan people. Juno opposes Aeneas and all he represents, thus she opposes piety. The next two lines are the orders to Aeolus, and thus we have four imperatives, incute, obrue, age, and desike. In reward for this service, Juno presents him with his prize. The sunt begins the sentence, so we can translate this as there are, with mihi as our dative of possession, there are for me, or you could even translate this as I have. The rest of the line is in chiastic arrangement, A, B, B, A, with the prestanti corpore, an ablative of description. And don't get too worked up that corpore is singular when we'd expect a plural in English. And don't get confused by the double relatives quarum and quae. These are actually two relative clauses. Quarum, of whom, refers to the 14 nymphs, and here's the rest of this relative clause, and you might want to assume an est to make this make more sense to us. And the quae, who refers to deopea, and here's the rest of this relative clause, with forma being an ablative of specification, most beautiful with respect to her shape or appearance. Again, assume an est. Yungam and dikabo are both future tense verbs, first person singular. Remember that third and fourth conjugation verbs don't use bo bis bit for the future, but om ace et. Propriam refers to deopea, too. Juno will proclaim her to be Iolus's proper wife. Line 74 and 75 are a purpose clause introduced by the ut. Line 74 has the accusative of duration of time for all the years, bookending the tecum and meritis pro talibus. You could call this a chiasmus. The such merits here refer to doing Juno's bidding at raising the storm. Exigat is present subjunctive like faciat, and it means something like spend time or live a life. Here, scanning line 75 helps us out with pulcra. If the a is short, then it's nominative, describing deopea, beautiful she. But if the a is long, then it's an ablative, describing prole, with beautiful offspring. Uh, it's long, so pulcra modifies prole. Oh, hey, look at this interlocked word order, a syncesis. 
So Juno bribes Iolus, not with sex, and that would be Venus's purview, but with a marriage. And that makes sense, given that Juno is the goddess of marriage. This is her power, and this controls her offer. And don't worry, Juno will utilize her powers over marriage other times in the Aeneid. For Iolus's reply, assume a deexit or something like that. And the hike is neuter accusative plural, these things or these words, contra in reply. And in fact, Iolus's reply is very formal, and he defers to Juno and her power, nor does he mention the bribe, the reward of Deopea, at all. To us here modifies labor, assuming an est, and it takes the infinitive explorare. It's your job to figure out, and the object is quid optes, what you want. Optes is present subjunctive because it's in an indirect question. Fas est also takes an infinitive, capesere, and usa is neuter accusative plural, the direct object of capesere. But notice the placement of tuus at the beginning of his speech, and mihi here at the beginning of the next clause. I mentioned that Iolus is deferential to Juno. It's your job. For me, it's divine law. And Iolus acknowledges that Juno has choice in the matter. He is bound by his duty, but strangely enough, it's his duty to Jupiter, not his wife's sister, Juno. But maybe there's more to Iolus's story than we're letting on, because he, yet again, defers to Juno by reminding her that he owes everything to her. We don't know if there's a bit of history between Juno and Iolus, uh, possibly. So here we have three phrases. Each started with a two, and that's an anaphora, and each grows in length. It's a bit of a rhetorical flourish with Kolkum Quakregni, one of the objects of Conchilios. Iolus is pretty humble, whatever this is of a kingdom, this small little thing. Also, the Conchilios has three objects, the Quadcum Quakregni, Skeptra, and Yoem. And so it has the meaning of obtain or procure with the kingdom and scepter, but it has to change its meaning to something like win over or make friendly when Jove, Jupiter, is the object. Also, das here, just like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, means give the power or ability to do something when it's followed by an infinitive like here. Remember also that diwum at the beginning of the video was generative plural? Same here, it qualifies apulis, an ablative of location at the banquets of the gods. Finally, potentem assumes a me. You make me powerful over the genitive plurals here. So there you have it, Juno's bribe and Iolus's reply. There's a little bit of irony here though. Juno is pissed at the Trojans because in part of the judgment of Paris where Venus, Aphrodite to the Greeks, won because she bribed Paris with Helen. Maybe Juno's learned her lesson, but it's telling to note that Iolus doesn't mention the bribe at all, instead saying that he will do her bidding because of everything that she's done for him. Next comes the storm. <laughs>